Hello and welcome to another Hairy Golfer video at Lillybrook. First I want to shout out three Essex boys that I met on the tee. They're down there on the green. They come up on a golf holiday and they played Lillybrook because they found one of my videos. Now today I'm going to play safe. I'm taking favourite clubs from the tee box, so I've just gone with my hybrid. And I'm going to play short of hazards and see what I score basically and see if there's anything here that is useful to you. So I had 156 to the front and I went with the 7 iron so I couldn't reach any of the bunkers. I'll tell you what, there's some Sunday mornings I wish I was here in two. So the plan is to see if any of this actually helps me, whether I should play more aggressive, or if by playing safe it actually helps me. But as we can see, we're starting the first hole with a bogey, but I've done considerably worse than that in the past. Right, well one of my little expressions is get on the golf course safely and get on the card safely. That's what we've just done. And we did have a chance for par. If I chipped a little closer, then perhaps I would have dropped it in, I would have got me par. So, you know, if you're consistently messing up your first hole and walking off with a snowman, do something different for goodness sake. Get a nice, safe, bogey. Right, I got 158 middle. But as you can see, this green is protected by a bunker left and a bunker right. And this very large tree that uh, really dominates the entrance to the green. So instead of say taking a six iron for them to land in the middle of the green, I want to take something that's going to hit the ground before it reaches the canopy of that tree. So anything that I squirt to the right will go under it and give me a playable shot. What I don't want to do is to hit the canopy, have a strange bounce off somewhere else and finish with a double bogey. As it happens, we're on this temporary. I got 105, I'm going with a 50 degree. Which is way short. I'm playing here just short of the green, but I'm not quite switched on to the shot. One thing you must do when you're laying up is to make sure you are actually concentrating on where the ball needs to go. And I was just switched off to that. So being uncommitted, we've got ourselves our third bogey and we're three over after three. This isn't looking good so far. Fourth hole, first hole that I think is wide enough for the driver, so we're going driver. But that was a bit of a slap, I must admit. 
Again, I'm playing short of the green. I don't want to go in any bunkers. So a nice six iron down, fading on the wind, just shy of the green. So let's go and get our par. Four over after four, going with my favourite five wood. Because I have so much trust in this club, I always hit it well. Now I'm going to play just short of the green. That was perfect. I've hit a smooth six iron because I wasn't going for the flag. I wasn't even going for the green. So there was no pressure on me. And when there's no pressure on you, you kind of like hit the ball better. I'm nowhere near that bunker over there. I'm nowhere near on the right hand side, which is dead. Even if I'd flushed it, I wouldn't have reached it. If I'd come down here on the left, then the chip would have been fairly easy. So of all the holes on the golf course where we've got a chip and a putt for a par, it's stroke index one. Remember, I've gone five wood, easy six iron. What a chump! We had a chance. <laughs> well, one thing's certain, you wouldn't want me mending your watch today, would you? Five wood again. Tell you what's nice about this, it's got 18 degrees of loft, it's very forgiving, it's very easy to hit straight because you're putting a lot of backspin on the ball. I can't imagine what it must be like, kind of like taking driver off every tee, slicing off every tee, racking up double bogeys. I just hope for your chipping and putting, better than me, be better than me. Bunker right, so I'm going left. Let the wind turn the ball for me. Not the best strike in the world, but nice and safe. We are absolutely desperate to get our first par on the board. Finally, there it is. Number seven. Now the only safe place really is to get up the green, especially with a back flag. I've just been joined on the tee by a lady because we had a bit of a wait. Now I see this lady around the golf course quite an awful lot knocking it round on her own, so I invite her to join me. I see she is an absolutely cracking golfer. Do not be fooled by her age or her size. She is a wonderful golfer, so it was a it was a pleasure for me to play a couple of holes with her. She was coming off after eight. I'm off six. Oh, good. Now I could sling the three wood round this tree quite easily, 
or even the driver. But as we're going safe, this is the four iron chunk and run down the fairway. And that's gone barely a yard off the ground. It's absolutely perfect for what I wanted. And just a lazy nine iron into the green. Thank you. Thank you. Number nine, wide enough for the driver. So here we go. Right, I got 207 to the middle. Now, whatever we hit down here, we're going to have a downslope for our third shot. So you could pick a club here that will get you to your favourite distance, your favourite wedge distance but you're still going to be on a downslope, so you might as well try and get a little further down than just a full wedge. Now we don't want anything to do with the trees on the right or the bunker on the right, so perhaps pulling the five wood here or a rescue is not the best option. So I'm going to go, what have I picked up? I'm going to go six iron. This is not a hole to target with our long game. This is a hole to target with our short game. Let's get it down there nice and safe, and if we're going to make a par, it's going to be with the short game. don't know what I'm going to have left in, but as it's downhill and the green is downhill, it's going to be a chip and run. It's going to be a very simple old man chip and run. Well, sometimes it bounces for you, sometimes it doesn't. Well, this isn't looking particularly good, is it? This missed putt makes us seven over for the front nine. So uh, hopefully the back nine will be a little bit more successful on. Number 10, out with a favorite five wood. A little bit low, a little bit skanky, but it's in the middle because it's our favourite five wood. Finally a green that we can actually attack because all I'm going with here is a pitching wedge. Number 11, the only way of playing safe here is to take enough club to get to the fat of the green and take all the bunkers out of play. Which is a good thing, seeing as I shoved this out to the right. And I don't know who's reading my greens today, but they're fired. Because of the nature of the dog leg, I don't have a great deal of choice here. I've got to hit driver to get a view at the hole. If I went with a hybrid, I stand a better chance of hitting it straight. But I'm not going to be looking up here. 
I'm just going nine iron. I'm thinking, why put a long club in my hand and make a mess of it? Let's just get it up the hole a bit. And that's another nine iron. So I should have gone eight iron wedge. I've gone nine iron, nine iron. Just hope it hasn't gone too far. They say that when you teach, you learn. That's probably one of the easiest pars I've ever had. 13, and out with the five wood again. Nice and safe. So we've ended up very nice and safe at the foot of the slope. And we won't get a great view of the green from there and it is a little bit divot city so there's a little bit of risk involved in laying up but uh, let's tackle the second shot and get our par. The problem from here is I can see sod all. So I can only really guess at how far left I've got to hit to get this on the dance floor. Right, so I've hit the bank on the left and it's come round and it's turned out okay, but I don't think playing safe was a good idea on this hole. You really do need to see the green. So that one was a little bit to the right. Imagine the damage I'd have done with my driver. And that was a little bit fat. In fact, it was obese. Trip and run up onto the top shelf, I hope. We made it onto the shelf by an inch. This fairway is wide enough for driver. But let's stick with a little five wood. Plus I'm hitting it that good. Now the only safe spot for this is out to the right. I can hit the hybrid well, so the hybrid is the choice, but it's not going to reach. And that one takes a wicked bounce left. Right, I've got 35 yards. I'm going with pitching wedge. I want the ball to run out. But I also need the loft to get out, get actually get onto the green in the first place. And with a line like this, there's a tendency to pull it left. So aim a little right. That might be a bit big. Well, 
Right, slight error here. I've gone too far left. So I've come down the rough. So the ball hasn't ran out very far. I got 132 on a steep down slope. I'm taking 99. Now on a down slope, you have to chase the club down the hill. You can't try and lift the ball in the air. It's going to come out low and it should come out hot. We made it to the dreaded 17th. Got a lucky par on that last one, I will admit. Now we've got two bunkers left, we've got water right, we've got about 130 yards of instant lost golf ball right in front of the tee box. So I'm going to go six iron, I'm going to go at the, up the hill towards the left hand bunker. I can't reach, so I can relax, I can swing smoothly, I can stop strangling the golf club put a decent pass on the ball. Funny how well you hit the ball when you're not strangling the life out of the golf club because you're afraid. Swing smooth, hit it out in the middle of the bat and it goes. I think I was trying far too hard for the par with my first chip. Overhit it. Anyway, we got our bogey. Now what I see up here, I hit driver over the top of those trees. And if I block it a little bit too far to the right, it's fine because my driver is long enough. Because it's long enough, I do not fear this hole at all. So I relax and I hit a good one because my bad shot is a pull down here somewhere and occasionally out of bounds down the left. But that's usually when I've been stood on the tee a long time waiting on the group in front. But what I see a lot from, it's sort of like the 11 to 16 handicap range, is they come on here, oh there's a deer going across, they come on here with a hybrid or a four iron, they know it doesn't get over the trees, so they grip the club tight, they make a stiff swing and they're going out of bounds and in the trees here. So whatever you do here, grip the club lightly, swing smoothly. So I think what I ought to do is to pull an iron, tee up on the right and aim down the left over here. If it's short of the road, it's short of the road. If it makes it over, it makes it over. Now the awkward thing with the second shot is you're on a downhill lie with a ball above your feet and that can bring in the fat, the thin, the shank 
and any other number of shots, the pull as well. So you've got fat, thin, pull, shank. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with the old man's chip and run. Yeah. Well, I don't think I've done too bad considering I've got no short game today worthy of calling a short game and I flatly refuse to go for quite a few greens so I'm finishing it with an 11 over 80 is there anything that you could learn from this perhaps